Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the questions on Quiz 2 for Chapter 7, which is about estimation. The first question on this quiz is, if you can use only one number to estimate a population parameter, that's the point of estimation, by the way, then the best value is a, a confidence interval, a probability value, a point estimate, or a null hypothesis. The answer is a point estimate. That's if you can give only a single number, because a confidence interval has two numbers. A probability value doesn't estimate a population parameter, something from hypothesis testing, which we'll talk about in the next chapter, and the same thing's true for the null hypothesis. Um, again, don't forget, we've got this little formula. It's kind of silly to even call it a formula for the point estimate, but we just have that the population mean is equal to the sample mean. It's, it's not saying that that is what it is, but that is the single best estimate, the single best guess as to what the population mean is. Question two, how is the confidence interval affected when the sample size increases? And the choices are A, becomes wider, B, becomes less biased, C, it increasingly resembles a normal distribution, or D, it becomes narrower. Well, the answer is it becomes narrower. Bigger sample, smaller confidence interval. It's a negative association. And here's the chart. We've seen it a few times. You see again that uh, these are confidence intervals. And on the far left, is based on a sample size of 10. It's a really wide interval. It's really big. And you see that when they go to 20, it gets a lot smaller. And 40, it's smaller still. Up to 800, where it's much smaller. And so again, bigger samples are smaller confidence intervals, which actually allow you to have more precise estimates. Okay, number three, imagine two samples that are drawn from the same population and measure the same variables in the same way. Sample A has a larger confidence interval than sample B does. Which sample likely has the larger N or sample size? Well, remember, larger sample size means smaller interval narrower confidence interval. Uh, a is bigger, A is wider, B is narrower. Um, and the choices are they're the same as sample A, sample B, or cannot be determined. Well, sample B, because it has a narrower confidence interval, and that means a larger sample size. Again, we saw this one just a second ago. Small sample on the left, big confidence interval. Big samples on the right, small confidence interval. There you go. All right, number four, when the range of confidence for a confidence interval becomes higher, from 80 to 99%, for example, then the confidence interval will A, become narrower, B, become wider, C, be more difficult to calculate, or D, be less accurate. Well, the choice is B, become wider. When you increase the level of confidence, it means you're, you're going to hedge your bets more. And you can see right here, um, on the bottom, we have a 90%, then a 95 is wider, then a 99 is wider still, and a 99.9 .9 is the widest of uh, these particular four. And that's because you have to use a different z-score um, that you multiply against the standard error, and that gives you a bigger range. And again, it means you're more likely to actually include the true population parameter in there, but it, it can become um, much less precise and harder to be really much less informative. All right, last one in quiz two. Imagine a sample of n equals 64, so 64 people, and a mean of 121 that comes from a population with a standard deviation of 16. Based on these data, what would be the 80% confidence interval for the population mean? And for an 80% confidence interval with z-scores, you use a 1.28 plus or minus as the z-score. And the choices are here, 120 to 68 to 121, 32, and so on. Um, the answer to this one is B. It's 118.44 to 123.56. It's actually the, the widest of these choices here. Let's take a look at how it, you get these numbers. First off, as I said before, it's nice to start by putting down the parameters that we're dealing with. We have an 80% confidence interval, that's the CI, a sample mean of 121, a sample size, N, of 64, and a population standard deviation, sigma, of 16. First thing is to get the uh, uh, standard error. That's sigma divided by the square root of n, that's 16 over six, the square root of 64, that's 16 over eight, and so the standard error here is two. Um, coincidental, that's what it was in the last quiz also. 
Then we use our big formula here, but it's the same formula that gets repeated with a minus on the left and a plus on the right, and that's the population mean right there in the middle that we're trying to estimate. The sample means 121, so that goes on the left and on the right, and then we subtract a certain amount, that is the uh, z-score that corresponds to the 80% confidence level uh, times the standard errors. So it says you want to go down 1.28 standard errors, and the standard error is 2, so you're going to go down a certain amount. And on the right side, we're going to go up the same amount. Uh, you run through the multiplication, you get uh, 121 minus 2.56 and 121 plus 2.56 then do your uh, addition and subtraction and you get that the 80% confidence interval for the population mean uh, puts it somewhere between 118.44 and 123.56 and that's it for the uh, quiz number two. Thanks.